Hi friends, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, we are going to see the packet tracer activity, investigate uh, unicast, broadcast and multicast traffic. Uh, here is our objective of this packet tracer activity. Uh, in part 1, we will generate unicast traffic. In part 2, generate broadcast traffic. And in part 3, investigate multicast traffic. Uh, we will uh, go to this background here. <coughs> Sorry, uh, this activity will uh, examine unicast, broadcast, and multicast behavior. Uh, most traffic in a network is unicast. When a PC sends an ICMP echo request to a remote router, the source address in the IP packet address header is the IP address of the sending PC. The destination address in the IP packet header is the IP address of the interface on the remote router. The packet is sent only to the intended destination. Using the ping command or the add complex PDU feature of packet tracer, we can directly ping broadcast addresses to view broadcast traffic. For multicast traffic, we will view EIGRP traffic. EIGRP is used by Cisco routers to exchange routing information between routers. Routers using EIGRP send packets to multicast address. 224.0.0.10, which represents the group of EIGRP routers. Although these packets are received by other devices, they are dropped at layer 3 by all devices except EIGRP routers, with no other processing required. Now we will come to part 1 generate unicast traffic. In that step 1, I use a ping to generate traffic. Click PC1 and to click the desktop tab, then command prompt, enter the ping 10.0.3.2 command. The ping should succeed. Coming to the topology, here we can see our PC, uh, PC1 and we are going to ping to uh, this interface so that is serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 on router 3. Alright, coming to PC1, desktop, command prompt, here we are going to give pink and the address yes yes we are getting the replay now we will go to uh, step 2 enter simulation mode click the simulation tab or enter a simulation mode click edit filters and verify that only ICMP and EIGRP events are selected click PC1 and enter the pink 10.0.3.2 command Right, we will do this now. We will uh, switch to simulation mode, right, and uh, we have to select only ICMP and EIGRP. So we are going to give uh, edit filters. Yes, here we can see ICMP and uh, EIGRP. Right. Now we will go to PC1, command prompt and we are going to ping again, yes. Now we will come to uh, step 3, examine unicast traffic. The PDU at PC1 is an ICMP echo request intended for the serial interface on R3. Okay, here we have seen that this is ICMP can see that yes type ICMP so click capture or forward repeatedly and watch while the echo request is sent to router 3 and the echo replay is sent back to PC1 stop when the first echo replay reaches PC1 right we will do that we'll keep this here so that it will be visible we are going to press capture or forward Yes, it goes, it goes to switch, router 1, router 3, again capture forward, goes back, router 1, switch, and in PC1. And here we get the first uh, uh, replay. So here they ask a question, uh, which devices did the packet travel through with the unicast transmission? Yes. We have seen from PC1, uh, it went to switch, then router 1, then to router 3, 
and it uh, gone back to PC1 again through router1, switch and PC1. Now we will move to B. In the simulation panel even list section, the last column contains a colored box that provides access to detailed information about an event. Click the colored box in the last column for the first event. The PDU information window opens. What layer does this transmission start at and why? Right, we will verify this now. Now we will come to the event list. Right here it is. So info, here is our uh, first uh, event. Right. So I am going to click and here we can see uh, this layer um, start with uh, layer 3 because it is uh, dealing specifically with the IP and ICMP. Coming to uh, C, examine the layer 3 information for all, all of the events. Notice that both the source and destination IP addresses are unicast addresses that refer to PC1 and the serial interface on router 3. Uh, what two changes take place at layer 3 when the packet arrives at router 3? Right, we will verify that. Here is our event list and we will check it one by one. Here we can see the source IP address and destination IP address. Also here we can see the type 8. Going to the next. Right, we will go to the third one here. Yes, here we can see the same. Coming to router 3. Right, here we can see the difference. Now the IP address is flipped. So the source become destination and destination becomes source and here we can see the type is 0. Previously it was 8. So these are the two uh, changes happened when it reaches router 3. Yes, here we can see that. Now, yes, now it will be the same. Right. Yes. Now we will go to D. Click a reset simulation. Here we can see reset simulation. We are going to click on that. Right. Now we will come to part 2. Generate broadcast traffic. In that step 1, add a complex PDU. Click add complex PDU. The icon for this is in the right toolbar and shows an open envelope. So float the mouse cursor over the topology and the pointer changes to an envelope with a plus sign. Okay. Now click PC1 to serve as the source for this test message and the create complex PDU dialog window opens. Enter the following values. We have to give a destination IP address 255.255.255.255. This is nothing but the broadcast address. Then the sequence number is 1 and uh, one short time is uh, 0. Within the PDU settings, the default for a select application is pink. What are at least three other applications available for use? All right, we will see that. Coming to the topology, uh, here we can see uh, add a complex PDU. Yes, we are going to click on that. Yes, now we can see the cursor uh, changes. Now we will go to PC1 and we are going to click on that. Yes, now we uh, get this uh, create complex PDU window. Now here we are going to give the details uh, destination IP address as 255.255.255.255 and we have to change the sequence number. Here we are going to give as 1 and now we are going to change this uh, one short time as 0. And here we can see in PDU settings, a select application, yes, it's already pink. And they asked what are the uh, other application available here. So when we click on this, here we can see we have a DNS, Finger, FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, IMAP, etc. We can see a lot, yes. Anyway, here we are going to select pink. So what is next? Uh, click create PDU. This uh, test broadcast packet now appears in the simulation panel event list. It also appears in the PDU list window. It is the first PDU for scenario 0. Right, we are going to click on this uh, create PDU in destination address entered. Oops, yes. So here our destination IP address is missing. 
here we are going to give it 255.255.255.255 dot 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 it's correct yes so the sequence number is one and uh, one short time zero yes it's correct now we are going to give a create PDU yes yes so what is next we will see right coming here click capture or forward twice this packet is sent to the switch and then broadcasted to PC2, PC3 and Router1. Examine the layer through information for all of the events. Notice that the destination IP address is 255.255.255.255. This is nothing but the broadcast address. Which is the IP broadcast address you configured when you created the complex PDU exactly. So we are going to give this a capture or forward twice here capture or forward we'll expand this window so it will be more visible right capture or forward again we are going to give a capture or forward yes yes now we will uh, click on each PDU so on uh, router 1 here we can see source IP address and here the destination IP address is the broadcast address and in outliers here we can see uh, it becomes a unique hash address yes so coming to pc2 here we can see the details yes pc2 when broadcast address here we can see and in outer uh, outliers here we can see uh, it is becoming a unique hash address right coming to pc3 here also we can see the same thing source ip address so here the destination address is uh, broadcast address and coming to outliers here we can see the pdu becomes a unique cast replying back to pc1 next is analyzing the osi model information what changes occur in the layer 3 information of the outliers column at router 1 pc2 and pc3 yes just now we have seen that the pdu becomes a unique cast replaying back to pc1 now we will go to f uh, click capture or forward again does the broadcast pdu ever forward on to router 2 or router 3 why okay we will check that we are going to click on capture or forward again here yes no it is not uh, sending to uh, or forwarding to router 2 or router 3 because the limited broadcast should remain within the local network unless the router is set to forward. Next is after you are done examining the broadcast behavior, delete the test packet by clicking delete below scenario 0. Yes, here is that. We are going to click on delete. Right. Now we will come to part 3, investigate multicast traffic. In that step 1, examine the traffic generated by routing protocols. Click capture or forward, EIGRP packets are at router 1, waiting to be multicast out of each interface. Right, we will check this now. Simply we are going to click on capture or forward here. Yes, here we can see that. It's EIGRP, yes. Now we will come to B. Examine the contents of these packets by opening the PDU information window and to click capture or forward again. The packets are sent to the two other routers and the switch. The routers accept and process the packets because they are part of the multicast group. The switch will forward the packets to the PCs. Okay, click capture forward until you see the EIGRP packet arrive at the PCs. Well, we will do this now. We will open this PDU here. Yes, here we can see uh, the multicast address uh, 224.0.0.10. This is for EIGRP. Right, we again we will uh, click on capture or forward again capture or forward yes it goes to switch we will verify that yes it's layer 2 right we are going to click capture or forward again yes it goes to the pcs so here also we can verify 
destination IP is a multicast traffic right we'll go to PC2 here right next is uh, what do the host to do with the packets yes here we can see that the host reject and drop the packets next is examine the layer 3 and layer 4 information for all of the EIGRP events what is the destination address of each of the packets yes just now we have seen uh, that was 224.0.0.10 the IP multicast address for the EIGRP routing protocol. We will press again capture or forward and here we can see the EIGRP and here we can see that multicast traffic multicast address 224.0.0.10 Next we will go to D. Uh, click one of the packets delivered to one of the PCs what happens to those packets yes uh, previously we have seen the packets are dropped and no additional processing is done and here we'll come to the last question based on the traffic generated by the three types of uh, IP packets uh, that means this unicast broadcast and multicast what they talk about what are the major differences uh, in the delivery yes so the unicast packet move through the network uh, destined for a specific device we have seen that the broadcast gets sent to every device in the local area network that also we have seen and the multicast is sent to all devices but only processed by those that are part of the multicast group yes uh, the last one he have seen uh, that is the EIGRP PDU yes that's all in this packet tracer activity uh, in this video we examined we just investigated uh, unicast broadcast and uh, multicast behavior this activity is mainly for understanding uh, this concept uh, unicast broadcast and multicast uh, friends if you have any doubt uh, please comment below also if you like my videos uh, give a thumb also, if you like to get the information regarding the updates, you can subscribe the channel right now. Thank you.